have some applause here. There they are. Cut off. But we have uh, we have applause. Let me see if I can find my applause. Uh, no, 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 there. Hold on. No. I knew I had some applause around here somewhere. Well, maybe I can find it. Standing by uh, to spend the first half hour, at least with us tonight, is Yoichi Shimatsu, who has been with us for four and a half years. And we don't boast here, we don't brag, we just tell it like it is. And the reality of the situation is everything Yoichi and I have told you, Yoichi especially, he's, he's, been, he's been to Fukushima a dozen times risking his life detoxifying with herbs from radiation burns, you name it. He's called the Olympics before they even talked about it as being a catastrophe. Uh, they're going to be unbelievably horrible. They're just awful. Uh, oh, it may look nice on TV, but when the radioactive nuclides embed themselves in the Olympians and they come home with them and they end up with cancer a few years later, it's not going to be so nice. Uh, Yochi, how are you? Well, I'm okay. I'm back in Thailand. I'm uh, more relaxed, uh, trying to get myself back together, trying to do some uh, scientific inquiry again into the whole nuclear issue. And bingo, you know, as soon as I feel a little better, I look up the IAEA, the International Atomic Agent, uh, uh, Energy Agency, headed by Yukio Amano. Uh, Mr. Amano is mm -hmm. uh, a career a uh, nuclear apologist and a cover-up artist. His, mm -hmm. He was hired uh, at the same time Japan's mm -hmm. nuclear bomb program was restarted in the 1950s. He was mm -hmm. uh, trained at Tokyo University, hired right out of there mm -hmm. uh, to basically, he was groomed to basically uh, deny to the world that J Japan is on a crash program to build a nuclear arsenal, which, is, of course, is already completed by now. Oh, yeah. And much of the damage to Fukushima that has gone unreported. There's a massive amount of radiation flowing over the Pacific. He's very... Uh, are, are we okay? Yeah, we're good. You sound fine. Okay, yeah. We're getting, we're getting a little interference over here. I think I said the, I said the key words here. Uh, yeah. But anyway, Yuki Amano, the director, the uh, general, the director general of the IAEA, has promoted a program since two years ago, uh -huh. 2013, uh, supporting the theory, and this is related to the climate change theory, the global warming carbon theory, uh, that the oceans are uh, badly affected by acidification, that carbon in the atmosphere from coal, uh, fossil fuel. Oh, fire he, he's the one who created that uh, crackpot idea that it was acidification that was doing it? Well, there is, you know, I mean, this is a very small branch of marine scientists, because as you know, you know, well, we used to have a lot of paper plants, you know, back before the paperless office. Yeah, you know when people read newspapers and read books. Yeah, all the mills things, and all the paper, there were a lot all of paper the, mills. Sure. Yeah, pumping, pumping acid. You know, uh, hyd uh, yeah, hydro, all kinds of acid. Not into anymore. The rivers, estuaries, yeah. and ocean. And that branch of science has got the science got smaller and smaller as paper mills were being shut down all over the world. Right as we went paperless. Okay, but suddenly it was revived two years ago. With the urging of the IAEA, well, some vast flush fund that it has, and uh, the IAEA has put out a couple of articles, uh, very poor, poorly argued. You know, I would hardly call it science; it's more like PR about the terrible problem of acidification of the ocean, and all they could come up with is a chart showing zero point zero five percent increase in the Great Barrier Reef. In other words, minuscule amount, you know, hardly noticeable, which certainly cannot account for the number of species that have been uh, hard hit in Australia's uh, Great Barrier Reef, okay? Hardly can account for that. And certainly they're not taking into account that whole series of nuclear weapons tests 
in the South Pacific as a, as a potential or possible cause, right? In other words, immediately they exclude the vast amount of nuclear bombs that were exploded, you know, near Australia, and sure. instead they're focusing on tiny amounts of acid buildup in the Great Barrier Reef, as it's called, which obviously that range is so small. No, it, it, it hasn't moved from the pH number that's already on, that pH of 8. It's hardly moved. So basically... What we're seeing, this is an obvious cover-up, and the source that they quote is the University of Queensland, okay, where a new, uh, you know, uh, a new climate, it's called Global Climate Center Research Center has been, has been constructed, and, uh, that's really promoting these, uh, twin theories. They call ocean, uh, acidification the evil twin of uh of fossil fuels in the atmosphere. Okay, this is what they're calling it as. And they've gotten a lot of mo- amount of money. Now why Australia, you may wonder. Why Australia? Why University of Queensland? Well the main private donor to the University of Queensland is the Rothschild group. Is the uh the Rothschild group owned company called Rio Tinto, Rio Tinto Mining, yeah. which owns the largest uranium mine in the world, okay, the largest um, uranium mine owned in the world is owned by Rio Tinto, which is the majority shareholder is the Rothschild Group. And it's called, the, that, that mine is called the Energy Resources of Australia. It's uh, surrounded by Kakadu National Park. It's had 200 mining accidents, the most recent of which a couple of years ago flooded the Aboriginal town, Kakadu National Park is a protected area for the Aboriginal people. The mine flooded, went straight to town, went into the water supply of these people who have been opposing the mine. They said this mine is a travesty. Our ancestors are here. This is sacred land. Get out, Rio Tinto. And then what happens? A massive flood of radiation, radioactive water yeah. hits them. What a okay. coincidence. Yeah, I yeah, I don't know what to say, you know, about yeah. You know, when the, the timing of these things, it's you know, yeah, you know, they gave up blankets to the Indians, didn't they? You know? I mean, you bet. Smallpox. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking about here, you know? Oh yeah. Oh, have a blanket, right? Yeah, yep. right. So something like this is happening. Rothschild group is massive and the other thing in Australia, this is where their pilot program to build the Global Carbon Bank, they call it the Carbon Ringa Bank. This would have been, would have been the bank that banked all of the money from the carbon tax, global carbon tax, okay? And this was also in Australia. So we see this acidification theory coming out of this Rothschild uranium nexus now being adopted by IAEA to protect Tokyo Electric from people like us who are saying the Pacific is dying because of the Asian releases. They mm-hmm. say, oh no, 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 oh no. You know, this is, this is a acid inside the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. So, it's an, enough to make you puke. Billions, billions they will spend for this cover up how yeah. the highest levels of a UN agency are dominated by yeah, yeah. the mouthpiece of the same people who run TEPCO. Yep. You know, yep. how they get their pay. How they get their way, and how the scientists, for a few silver dollars, silver pieces of silver, you know, will grovel before them, will get, and, and will falsify. Oh them. yeah, this is just astounding. Food as lickers. No, as we know, we're seeing what's happening. The advanced stages of this kill off in the yeah. Pacific. Yeah, yeah, they're food lickers. Of more and more. Listen to these. Listen yeah, to these. Uh, listen to these little snippets. Uh, from this uh, yeah. recent e- ENE news, I read them uh, last hour. Yeah. I'm going to read them again because I wanted you to hear them if you haven't had a chance to read them. There are, uh, as you know, uh, very few animals left in the North Pacific. The North Pacific is dying. The animals are acting delirious, like they have dementia. They're getting reports of that now. Here you go. These are quotes. As I noticed them out there and... I looked over here, and I saw all kinds of dead fish over there. They were everywhere, so said a fisherman who fishes out of Monterey Bay every day. He, like others who make a living in the open waters, knows something isn't right. 
Another quote. There have been fish dying. There have been a bunch of birds dead in the water as well. Some of the marine mammals like sea lions, seals, and otters, well, they'll have seizures and they will be delirious like they have dementia. Another quote. A common murray die-off, that's another type of animal, along the Alaska Peninsula. Unusual numbers in nearshore areas with many appearing weak and unapproachable by skiff. We don't know better whether the bird mortalities are rated uh, to uh, whatever killed the whales up there. Uh, one more. In addition to the whales, Alaska is seeing dead walruses and a lot of dead or disoriented birds. And this guy found a moose swimming in a lake in circles, struggling. And then he was dead. And these people are talking about acid in the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I hate to laugh, but it is so sick. But the absurdity of the cover-up, how far they'll go to stretch their material to cover the most specific, how ridiculous it is. What they're what they're trying to pull oh over. absolutely a little wool they're trying to pull over so many people's eyes yeah yeah as yep. if we can't tell as if we can't tell something very serious some very serious internal damage to the circulatory system to the coordination means the nervous system of these animals this is you know I, I don't know this is the environmental crime of the century I mean this uh, 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 that was a millennium maybe of what well uh, maybe of all time and yeah. The, Pathos of these animals, poor, and and you see all these reports uh, this summer of bears rampaging, bears on the loose, bears are unhappy all over North America, all over Russia. How come the bears are so unhappy? Uh-huh. Intelligent species, they're dying. They know something is wrong yeah. in their environment, right? Yep. These are top of the food chain predators. They ramble around a lot. They're familiar with humans. They know something is grotesquely wrong in their environment. You know, and uh, you know they see moose, uh, a moose walking around in circles in the days. The bears are going to be alarmed, just like a human should be if you saw that bird. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the kill off is going on, and until governments, until everybody, you know, I mean, the public, uh, uh, nonprofit groups, the environmental movement. Until everybody in the energy industry wakes up to what's happening and starts to decide to do something, it will. It is getting too late in many in the in the far Pacific Northwest. Obviously, it's already too late. It's going to take centuries to repair that, if ever, if ever. It may take millennia for species to regenerate and diversify again. This is uh, this is the biggest crime. Well, it'll, it'll never be the same as it was, Yoshi. Never. No. Well, that's the problem. That's the problem. It will all. Be you got mutation problem. factors at work everywhere, and and. Exactly, and we passed that moment. You know, long past the ice age and all that. And the only thing that might save the day here is another ice age. Although that would only delay the problem. So yeah, yeah this this adaptation, you know, is going to take so long, uh, far beyond our time. And unless we try to do something to stop this creation from being. Push out of Fukushima, which is not. You know, you've read uh, articles about they're widening the release canal, and they're saying, "Oh, uh, it's clean water." You know, not many uh, back roads of radionuclear type. But whenever it rains, there's a lot of radiation coming out. I mean, is it double speak or what? Right, blame the rain this, for the radiation yeah. <laughs> of, of of wastewater coming out of a nuclear plant. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is cart before the horse. But what, what, you know, I, you know, true. There's a lot more radiation coming out when it rains from the atmosphere, but that's all obviously sourced from the nuclear plant. So we are seeing people just sitting here inertly, just accepting these lies. You know, people they're are doing, so not doing, they're the doing nothing, Yochi. Nor are they going to do anything. I'm sorry to say, they're not going yeah. to. This is not going to well, happen. The problem is, the problem is, the problem is the same as for the animals. The moose are swimming around in a circle. The otters are not, 
What is happening with people? Are we going to see an increase in traffic driving accidents? Well, I'm wondering uh, the same thing. Are we going to see people start swimming in circles, uh, you know, and then die? That's it, behind the steering wheel. Yeah, Yeah. behind the steering wheel. This is exactly the point I'm saying. And we'll say, oh, we got improved driver training in California, but we just don't have the budget. Yeah, (laughs) That's what they'll say. (laughs) That's what they'll say, exactly. It's ridiculous. Yeah, the, the kill off obviously is extending far inland. The bears all over the United States. And, it's worldwide. Uh, Russia. That's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, we're smaller than bears. You know, bears bears are going to be slower to take this stuff up, right? I mean, uh, so uh, yeah. Well, humans are much more evolved. So basically, this is in the population, and this population is going to get increasingly uncoordinated, spastic. You know, disoriented is the word, disoriented, until, and then uh, people will just start keeling over in the streets. You know? Yeah, yeah, they will. Yep. They'll just start keeling over. Yeah, yeah, this is going to happen, and everyone's going to be wondering, oh, maybe this is because of acid rain from the ocean or something. I mean, you know, give, this, give us a break. The obvious is the obvious. We know what the cause is. Uh, they're spending billions to divert people's attention away. And, uh, seriously, this is the worst. You know, the Obama administration made many, many serious mistakes promoting Islamic radicalism in the Middle East, you know, with their Arab Spring project and everything, yeah. you know, which has led to the slaughter of you know, ungodly thousands of people. But I would say what he's doing is denial of this nuclear catastrophe, this obvious nuclear catastrophe, is the worst crime of his administration. And he will go down as the president with the worst record on history, because he will have lost, you know, half of the union. Not to, not to secessionists, you know, not to Robert E. Lee, but to radiation to pollution. Absolutely. Uh, no question. Yeah. Worst president, uh, probably in history, certainly easily the biggest liar, uh, ever to hold the president's office in my lifetime, yeah. easily. Yeah. Uh, no, no doubt yeah, I, I whatsoever. Just wish I wasn't seeing this happen. You know, it is it is hard to see this happening. Yeah, you know? well, it's Open very hard. It's stuff, heartbreaking. You know? I mean, uh, we, watch we're, we're losing our planet. planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The planet, not just uh, the, the North America. We focus on North America because what's happening on the Pacific Coast. Yeah, but you know, it's happening all over the world. Other countries are taking defensive measures. Taiwan, Korea won't allow the import. A Japanese food, yeah, they're more and more restrictive to hardly anything gets in. And the U.S. is allowing, you know, all the stuff that's let in, you know. It's, I mean, you know, the stuff shouldn't be eaten in Japan. Why should anyone else volunteer to eat radioactive food? We've got to stop it. Of course. Other course. thing is a cowardice in Japan. You know, Shinzo Abe, our prime minister, he's bleeding from all, you know, all sides, you know, both sides of the newspaper to say about him. And yet he just stood for re-election as Minister within his own party, just party election. Not a single politician, all of them knowing his condition. Every single politician know he's a dying man. He's dying from radiation. That one will step up. They, say, they, they all know, and they. they uh, wow. I worry about his mental health, his physical health, yeah. and uh, elect me instead because you know I would do something that he failed to do, and I would save mm-hmm. the lives of the rest of us. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, not one politician had the gumption to stand up and do that. Wow. You know? And this is where Japanese Valley system is all wrong. You know, mm-hmm. just because a guy is your boss doesn't mean you can't fire him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Especially I, I people, agree. I, I, had done it, it would create a route. It would create a, you know, a massive controversy in Japan and probably a boycott of that. Well, nation. what's and going on with the, uh, the, whole darn thing. the Olympics of deaths that are coming up? The Death Olympics yeah. of 2020, what, 2000, and uh, yeah. whatever uh, it is. The 2020 Olympics, yeah. Well, 2020. 2020. 2020 eyesight, they realize that yeah. you know, it's the Olympics of death coming up. They don't have a big stadium. They don't have anything they promised. The, the, the sites are old. Uh, I've been to some of them, uh, where the swimming training is going on, uh-huh. uh, where tennis, uh, a lot of gymnastics are going on. Crumbling the the, uh, the cement concrete steps. Really? The so they haven't they haven't built this big 
They haven't built this big palatial venue big for all of it. Stadium. A lot of a lot of the facilities go back to the 1964 Olympics. You know. That, that, that's wow, they got to get him the hell out of there. Jeez, come on. I can't believe that nobody, no scientist with any guts has taken a stand on this, calling for the Olympics to be relocated outside Japan to another venue. It's not just the nuclear, the water. I mean, you know, we're talking about the water, Tokyo's water supply. Yes, and yes. You take a shower, you drink the water. You're Absolutely. You're going to get uh, affected the air, of course, terribly. Is and eat that eat that, eat that Fukushima pain. rice like Shinzo Abe does for his health. Well, they're going to pressure a lot of teams to do that, you know, to go up to Fukushima. One of the stadiums is in Sendai, and they're going to pressure people to eat food up there, teams, young people, to eat the food to show it's okay. These people have no conscience. you got to understand, they could care less what happens to these foreign athletes, you know. They could drop dead and they'll feel better about it. Oh, but, you know, man. They're killing a bunch of points. Yeah, you have no idea the psychology, you know, the kind of psychology of these, you know, of these maniacs that are in power is, is unspeakable. It's, I can't think of another country that's this, this bad, you know, it's, uh, it just, it just, there's something, you know, grotesquely wrong that has happened in uh, Japan, especially since Fukushima, this whole denial, this whole desire to share death with others, you know, spread death. It is it's a very sick psychology. That have to be challenged, and people who are still who still uh, value life and sanity should be speaking up and standing up against this right now. You know, before it's too late. There are a lot of young kids go over there, right? So, right. And, and like I said, the buildings are unsound. Tokyo in Tokyo, the average life of an office building apartment block is twenty years. That's because of the high humidity rate, the high humidity there, the fact that the concrete, and the steel starts to rust when concrete crumbles, that they get structurally unsound. Though. 64. How long ago was that? You know, more uh-huh. than, uh, what, 50 years ago? Yeah, yeah. So we've got something, yeah. Uh, we got, we're going to have a uh, more uh, half century old building, more than building, more than twice their planned age. You know, a lot more only built a temporary structure, maybe the last five or six years. They're still standing, you know. And I've, I've been to some of these things. You can still see the steel beams, you know, where they join together and they're bolted together. They're totally corroded. You know? Yeah. The whole thing could fall down on people. Yeah. And, the, and the steps are like the main pole is gone. They I know. The concrete, they just sort of turn the sand. You know? So this is the condition of Tokyo today. Uh, it's a shameful, it's going to be a shameful uh, presentation no matter how you measure it or look at it or evaluate it. Yeah. Period. And yeah. a deadly one at that. So there we go. Yoshi. Yeah, uh, have to be, I, all I can say, if they don't move the site, if the Olymp- uh, uh, International Olympic Committee does not move the site, there has to be a boycott by many national. Well, there has to be a uh, criminal activity filed against them, for God's sakes. This is a crime. Well, uh, hopefully by then, hopefully by then, the United States, uh, uh, Obama won't still be the dictator in charge. Hopefully there will be elections with more sensible people. Well, power, we'll see. At least ask them questions, you know? Yeah. Yeah. dare to ask them questions. We don't want our athletes going over there. Going yeah, I agreed. Yeah, Yochi, absolutely. thank you. I know absolutely. you got to go. It is our disruption. Okay. We'll talk to you next yeah. week. Thank you very much. You be well. Okay. Very okay. good. Good luck now. Good night. <laughs> Yoichi Shimatsu, and we'll be right back with Richard Wilcox, Dr. Wilcox, standing by. Okay, and welcome back. Our number three, the second half of our hour three for you tonight, our Monday Fukushima report. Uh, I touched on some of the stories of continuing annihilation of uh, all sea life, especially the animals at the higher end of the food chain, tragically dying in agony, uh, horrible deaths. We... Shame doesn't even come close to what we should be feeling. Of course, when we kill six million of our own in the Middle East since the Iraq war and Afghanistan and Libya and now Syria, I mean, where does it end? Uh, it doesn't end. It just keeps going. We're, this is an insane species that has lost its way, uh, if it ever had it. It's all about money, power, greed. Death means nothing to these people, even death of the entire Pacific Ocean. They knew it was coming. They knew four years ago it was coming. The government of this country is, believe me, 
measuring water level, below water level at 20 meters, probably 50 meters, 200 meters is the deepest I heard. They're measuring the air, lower atmosphere, upper atmosphere. They're measuring it all. They know what's going on. How many news conferences have you ever heard where they have divulged, disclosed, or revealed any of the results of their tests? None. Zero. All a lie, all a cover-up, and they don't like me saying this, and that's probably why I'm in greater danger than ever. Uh, it's the truth. You people have a God-given right to know, wherever you live in the world, especially the Northern Hemisphere, what's going on around you. We are in deep trouble, and it's not going to go away. And living right in the middle of uh, Tokyo, somewhere over there, a city of 30 million people that should have been evacuated by any reasonable evaluation of the situation, but won't be because of the pride of the Japanese and the the duty-bound allegiance they have to their country. The Japanese won't say anything much. They can't. It's now against the law. It is Dr. Richard Wilcox, Ph.D., who teaches English, among other things, over there. Hello, Richard. Welcome back. Hello. Hello. I'm still here and uh, teaching English and uh, glowing in the dark. Well, you don't sound like you're glowing, but... Uh, <laughs> I hope not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. It's it. It is bad, like you say. But um, the we've talked about this before. The level of ignorance and the way that uh, the issue is totally covered up. And uh, it, you know, I was thinking a year ago, I gave a, a presentation with a, le- a number of other people at an English conference, and I was the only person to talk about a, a content issue, which means. Um, a topic related to some socially re- relevant issue, mm-hmm. and uh, the rest of it was all about grammar or something. And, uh, mm-hmm. and nobody else could even—they just looked at me like with a blank stare, like "What's what's that?" You know, really? That's the, that really, yeah. And uh, I had a book on sale and everything, and um, just people are uh, shell shocked. And these are mm-hmm. mostly foreigners, but and so that kind of encapsulates the yeah. attitude of people that just. Uh, the level of denial of the seriousness of the problem. Well, that's and, uh, that's the point. This is a us, yeah. this is a cultural. <laughs> it's a cultural thing. Denial yeah. is a cultural yeah. thing that goes along with duty and obligation yeah. in Japan more so than in sure. America by far. Oh yeah, absolutely. And they'll go down with the ship. Uh, and, and not only with the nuclear issue, I mean, it was insane. Uh, Yoichi's um, history lesson, very fascinating about uh, Amano and the IEA and how that was all set up. Oh, yeah, to way back. To initiate Japan yeah. down the, the nuclear road after, ironically, a country that had been uh, the only country to have nuclear bombs dropped on it adopts nuclear power. The Actually, at the time in the 1950s, Japanese... Mm-hmm. The top science uh, organization, whose exact name I forget at the moment, but they, I wrote about this at, at one article uh, a couple of years ago. But they were the absolutely the top science, uh, you know, uh, association in Japan at the time, and they were totally against nuclear power for obvious reasons, you know, mm-hmm. just for commonsensical reasons. They said, first of all, it seems too dangerous, and Japan is not a good place for it because of the. My God, it's and, a known earthquake you know, capital of the universe. It, Come on, you have to be a PhD to figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> but ironically, and then of. Um, Shoriki, who uh, bought the Yomiuri Shimbun, uh, which I also call the Gomiuri Shimbun, which in Japanese means selling garbage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they, <laughs> that's a Japanese pun. But, uh, they, he bought that and turned it into a right wing, quote unquote, right wing, whatever that means. Uh, but mainly, mainly, um, yeah, an LDP, uh, because at the time Japan was being pushed along, uh, down the, uh, you know, anti-communist route, uh, mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And so, but anyway, along with that was the nuclear agenda, which in the, uh, there was just a kind of interesting, uh, study somewhere. I, I posted that to you, I think, about how, uh, soft propaganda was used. And so they used, uh, cartoons, uh, characters to promote it to the Japanese. Like they you did. Said, they did. That's the, right. The cultural thing. Japanese are very childlike in many ways. And they, and so they, uh, they love comics and, um, so that worked, you know. They didn't have to hit him over the head, but they made it cute. And it was Astro Boy, the Astro Boy cartoon, which which made it, uh, you know, fun. And that made so, it palatable. They just went on their merry way. Wow. Yeah. That's so, sad. Anyway, that's some of the... But that's really interesting what Yoichi was saying about uh, Rothschilds and Rio Tinto. And, um, yeah, yeah. I looked into that a bit, and, and then... Uh, uh, I wrote that article about uh, Goldman Sachs, but I didn't really get into the angle about the mining ownership, but that's absolutely correct. Uh, you know, nobody ever at the mainstream media, of course, I mean, we're not surprised. They never look into the context or the background of where these things come from and uh, who is pulling the strings behind it. So that's that's all part of the agenda, though, the, these Satanists. Correct. Ultimately, yeah. Satanist, uh, Luciferian psychopaths that run yep. the world, which yep. is what they are yep. for sure. Is uh, the is there, uh, are you able to uh, to shop and come away with food that you have any yeah. confidence is is not radioactive there anymore? You got to right. know that a lot of it is. Right. Uh, I'm very careful about shopping. I buy things from Western Japan as much as possible, especially vegetables, or Hokkaido, which is a little bit outside the danger zone. The initial maps of the explosions were um, on 311, the week of 311, not on 311, uh, on September, not September 11th. Getting my 11s mixed up. That's coming up. Uh, on uh, March 11th, the week after, there was the two explosions and the three meltdowns, and that's when 70% of the radiation uh, was blown out to sea, but 30% of it went onto the land, and there are maps that show where it went, and if anything has grown in those areas, I absolutely avoid it, and so that includes Fukushima, uh, other prefectures which some of the listeners might not be aware of, but uh, in between Tokyo and Fukushima, including Guma or Tochigi or um, uh, uh, Ibaraki in Chiba. Yeah. Chiba is a huge prefecture, which is actually part of Tokyo. And so those prefectures I absolutely avoid, you yeah. know, 99% of the time, not 100%. But I know that uh, you know, Americans no. are beginning to move, especially the wealthy ones, quietly, and the real estate industry is not talking about it, but they're moving right. out of uh, coastal and oceanfront properties. They are. Mm. They're quietly yeah. moving out, and uh, you're going to see this. It'll, it will make the news sooner or later, but the real estate industry is not to be denied. It reminds me of the movie Jaws, how they just wanted to cover this up, because of real estate and tourism. God, yeah. it's sickening. Hold on a minute, yeah, Rich. We'll, we've got to, uh, yeah. got to pause. We'll come right back. Okay, back with Rich Wilcox talking about uh, Fukushima. Any talk in the Japanese press about what's happening to wildlife, sea animals, sea life, especially top of the food chain sea life, mm-hmm. along the west coast, and I mean all the way up to mm-hmm. Alaska, down to Baja. Yeah. Anybody talking about that over there? No. And there, are no. they still burning radioactive debris in those municipal incinerators yeah. and throwing it into the air? Yeah, okay. Uh, as far as the second question, I haven't heard anything about that and uh, in the media or... Anything that I can locate about that, uh, the incineration That means it's between, still going on. Uh, possibly, yeah. And the original information I have on that is that they were burning it in uh, the municipal incinerators, so debris from that was being spread all over the country to be shared because there was so much of it. What, what, did, what insanity. Everyone's got to do their yeah. part and take on <laughs> deadly radioactivity in their communities, in their cities, so they take it's their just, fair share. What the hell yeah. is that? 
Well, and there was a theory, yeah, there was a theory, which, I mean, I know we shouldn't believe in conspiracy theories, but that the reason they were doing that is so that down the road that if cancer rates went up, it would spread the rates around so they could uh, hide the effect of... Unbelievable. Uh, show, you know, but I mean, that was somebody's theory, but uh, possibly. It, but they, they were burning the debris, and, you know, I wish I could, that's a good uh, research project for me, I... But I do keep my eyes open, and I don't see anything on that. But I, I am very curious about that. But originally, they were burning it in the municipal incinerators that weren't equipped for filtering out radiation. No, they didn't have any scrubbers. Uh, they had nothing. Yeah, right. So uh, supposedly, it's supposed to remove a lot of the radiation, but whether it... There's a lot of malfunction and so on, so a lot of it would escape. And the government did use to track uh, radiation fallout, yeah. which is a really scary thing. And I don't think the new website is tracking that. I'd have to go back and check that again. But, uh, you know, and the, it, it raises the question, fallout from where? I mean, that's like when a nuclear bomb goes off, there's fallout, you know. So is this a normal thing now in our world that, um, you know, per every square meter, there's a a certain number of becquerels that fall in that meter, you know, square area. <laughs> so uh, that's a that's a good issue. I just um, couldn't. I still can't get crazy. over yeah. the fact yeah. that uh, these Japanese cities all did right. their fair share by polluting yeah. themselves by burning this stuff in their municipal incinerators. Yeah. Just um, mind boggling. Good. Good to bring that up, Jeff. I've, there's so many aspects of this, I sometimes forget about things or repress them. But I remember that was a big battle, and like in Kyoto, they were fighting against that. They were The central government said, you will take this waste and burn it, you know. And a lot of people said, no, we won't. We don't want this waste. And um, so there was... You know, what the deal is, Rich, excuse me, the, they don't. Yeah, when they ahead. burn it, it doesn't make the radionuclides go away. It no, just no. puts them up in the air. Yeah, that's right. So it's called uh, dilution, the dilution uh, approach, it's, it's I guess. Insane, insane. <laughs> right. Um, well, and it, you know, and the big issue also uh, is the, as you mentioned, the effect on wildlife. Well, the, as far as in Japan, this has been well documented, and I know this is totally different than the die-off in the ocean that we're witnessing, which is, which there's scientists are just baffled by. It. They just can't come up with an explanation. They're lying. Of where you a lot are, of them know damn well what's causing it. Yeah. They're liars. Right. They're horrors. Right. They're but, being told what to say. Yeah, they're captured. Scientist uh, funding determines their outcomes. That's exactly. not science. That's exactly. uh, yep. fraud. And at least to be asking more vigorously, challenging their hypotheses, but they don't even, the hypothesis that radiation could be causing this, but they don't even entertain that because they're so arrogant. It's like, well, we already know the outcome. Just like that guy who used to... Uh, Talk about Kai Vetter, who said that before they even checked, you know, oh, we already know the outcome because <laughs> we no, won't find anything of any that. consequence. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. Dr. That's Kai Vetter, true. the head of the nuclear yeah. engineering department at UC Berkeley, yeah. already yeah. pronounced the results of Operation Kelp Watch 14, which is overdue. As far as I'm concerned, it should have been published uh, this spring where they were testing kelp at 19 locations up and down the California coast for its ability to hold and retain most likely cesium, the cesium twins, but other nuclides mm -hmm. as well. And where do all the tests go and the results? To Dr. Kai Vetter. Do you think Dr. Kai Vetter might possibly be compromised? Gee. He is, and I... I and when I say I wrote about it, it's not like I did the original research, not at all. I, I don't really have time to do the deep research, uh, but I do look through the valid sources, and I did, uh, I mean, sometimes all you have to do is go to Wikipedia or something, but yeah, that guy is dirty up to his earballs, eyeballs in radiation, because he worked for the nuclear weapons industry, and yeah. so of course they're going to downplay. But, uh, you know, the interesting hypothesis that they don't, look at is uh, the uh, phytoplankton and plankton, which is as radiation biomagnifies, then that's the logical cause of the uh, 
you know, the larger mammals, sea mammals and fish sure. uh, dying off. And so that would be the vector or the, the means by which the radiation is transmitted to these life forms. So why don't they look at the plankton issue? And And I think there was some really good indications that, you know, where one of those plumes, when the uh, units blew up, uh, when 70% of it went out into the ocean, that some of those plumes would have hit in certain areas where there's a lot of plankton. And so if you just track the migration of that plankton and then whichever uh, sea creatures came in contact with yeah, it. Absolutely. You know, I mean, that's, that's not rocket science. No, right no. It, and you know, Woods Hole is... I've never seen anything where they look at that. And that other guy in Canada, uh, whose name I forget, but that other clown that Dana has de- uh, Oh, yeah, but, yeah. So they, he wrote a, a, a fraudulent article at their website, not Dana, this other guy, yeah. which is just fraud science. And we, we picked it apart, I did, and I had some help from really good colleagues, um, Nancy and uh, Yoichi and so on. But we picked that to pieces. It was garbage science. And that's what they produce, the you know, the industry paid. And, of course, they're uh, funded by the... Canada uh, atomic industry too. So that uh, that mm-hmm. fellow, I'm having a senior moment. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's, no, computer, it's a but, moment. It's it's uh, yeah. it's but a radioactive can... moment, is what yeah. it is. It is. <laughs> but you know, Jeff, just to I just kind of wanted to plug an article I saw for folks. Uh, Go ahead. Really good. It's called Tracking and Mitigating Radiation Poisoning from the Inside Out. Uh-huh. And it's, uh, it was great it. about this article. Yeah. Didn't you I publish it? it? Yeah. Oh, you did. You did. And thank you. And so it's by, uh, a scientist named Beth Ellen DeLugio. And so if you can find that article, folks, uh, it has wonderful information about what you can do to protect yourself against radiation. So we're not completely helpless. And, uh, there are so many uh, ways you can, number one is you can reduce exposure by uh, ex- all sorts of common sense things that people should always Correct. do, uh, yeah. which is yeah. don't have x-rays, you know, when you go to the dentist, tell them, oh, can you just poke around, you know, you don't need to take an x-ray of my skull, do you? And, on, and of course, CT scans are really bad. And, and so she has. And I had things so like many, key, I had a lot of CT scans when I had this accident. Oh, man. Yeah, and nothing well, I could do about to. it. I was unconscious, no. and right. uh, anyway. Well, in that case, it was worth. I mean, you have to. It's a a, a comparative thing, it's right? Probably you, you saved did the my right life. Thing to have them, so. right? No, there is a price for CT scans. I think I wouldn't say never, but I think they dole them out too easily. And uh, oh yeah, but there's you bet. there's all sorts of things. Uh, she even says minimize air travel as much as possible because people don't think about that. Um, because you're up high, but that, those are the, the. But that's not related to uh, nuclear accidents. But there's also lots of protective foods, and I know you've you've had on uh, various uh, uh, doctors and so on and holistic. I've got the best one, uh, the bio yeah. superfood. You can but, find it at the top of the yeah. homepage. Just click yeah. on that banner. Please, right. you should be taking it every day. They're little capsules. Just take three a day, and you'll have the same right. defense that they came up with for the Chernobyl victims. Saved countless yeah. lives. Built immune systems. Uh, just it works. And yeah, I, and it's I, I all take in it one every day. Yeah, absolutely, and it's all in one source, so you don't have to worry about that's right. the complicated. Um, but there are. She does have a list of oh, so many. Um, healthy food. Obviously, when you're consuming food, you don't want it to have radiation in it. But uh, fibers and detoxification uh, types of uh, supplements and sources. And in, in Japan, ironically, miso, which is um, made from soybeans, and it's a very common food. So uh, be careful, though, where you buy it from, which prefecture it comes from. And sea vegetables, well, those are kind of out. Those are also very healthy, but it depends where you get those. If you get it from the North Atlantic, I get seaweed from the North Atlantic, and so I take that every day. And it has all kinds of, uh, you know, wonderful benefits normally, but also to um, 
protect, mitigate against radiation. But anyway, it's a really long list, and I appreciate this this person for her research. Uh, fantastic, high quality scientific research. And just to go out on a positive note, I did want to mention that. So it's called tracking and mitigating radiation poisoning. So. Have every, please, everybody, wherever you're living, uh, I think that's a benefit. But thank, thank you, Jeff. You, Good to talk to you. Thanks, yeah. always. Okay, thanks. Sure. Maybe we'll talk to you next week. Thanks for standing Very by. Good. Okay. You be well. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Okay, good night. All right, there's our very busy Monday for you, and we will be back tomorrow night and do it again. We've got a whole lineup of guests for you. Lots happening. Lots happening. Take care, be well, sleep well, and please remember you are what you eat. So be careful. See you tomorrow.